Angels! Guardians! Lend me your spears! Welcome! Throne of Angels video blog episode number... Lucky number 13! I'm your host, Derek Osborne, also known as... Angel Boone, across the worldwide interwebs. Here to show you a world in miniature from the Throne of Angels. Let's get started with some news. So, this is a shout out, a call out, a request. To you angels and guardians out there in the UK, this is serious. All right, so Andy Lyon of uh, Angsty's Castings there in the UK, he was robbed, and I take that very seriously. So, you guys keep an eye out. Um, if you're not familiar, I'll throw a, a link up, obviously, to the website here. But uh, basically, his show stock, uh, his painted display models, his painted display figures. Um, Boxes, blisters, gone. Uh, details uh, of uh, the whole thing, uh, dragonpainting.net. I'll post a link in the, in the description section so you guys can, can take a look. But keep an eye out for that stuff. Hopefully we can help Andy recover some of his items. I want you guys to share that like on every blog or uh, miniature site that you guys visit. Really important, right? I totally despise uh, dishonesty and theft. Um, and especially when it hits home, right? I mean, this is this industry has, has been home for me, you know, for a good portion of my life. And uh, seeing smaller companies that I'd love to help out get hit like this, it really, I mean, it, it bothers me a lot. So let's reach out, see if we can find uh, find Andy's product and get it back to him. All right, glass for the cure. Something else that means something to me. Uh, October 20th and 21st, Rich out in Waco, Texas, running this event. I told you guys earlier I'm going to be uh, kind of hounded on this one. My father-in-law battled cancer for nine years, and I watched that man uh, really man up and teach me something about life and how to face adversity um, with this, right? So Clash for the Cure means something to me. I've donated uh, some, some stuff to Rich, and um, hopefully with... What he's got going on, and I mean, we're talking a 72 person tournament and a bunch of painters and a bunch of companies really throwing together some awesome stuff. I really think that this event's going to be off the chain. So um, check it out classforthecure.org. Hit the Facebook link. Give the guys some likes. If you guys, you know, can't make it, I mean, I know a lot of you guys are worldwide. So at least just go and support his Facebook page. Spread the word because you guys might be connected to people that are local to where he's at or people that are close enough that can drive, or people that are even willing to travel, right? I mean, there's some really epic stuff going on here. Uh, Studio McVeigh sponsoring, Cool Mini or Not is sponsoring. We've got painters like uh, Dead Dog from uh, Privateer Press fame sponsoring. Um, Terrarin from Privateer Press. Uh, both of those guys are brush straws, if you guys know what that is. Um, you know, phenomenal guys that are putting stuff in for sponsorship. Phenomenal companies that are putting stuff in for sponsorship for an outstanding cause. Rich, I'm behind you, man, and I will be pimping your, uh, your action until we get a close on this. So expect me to talk about that again in the future. All right, what are we covering today? Well, hey, another progress report. We're going to look at uh, Project St. Luke once again. I haven't touched Kang. I know some of you guys are really wanting to see where I'm at on him, but I'll be honest with you, I have not had a chance at the end of the school year, on top of that, my 14-year-old made the cheerleading squad, and she's a premier soccer player. My life's in a shambles right now, so I haven't had as much hobby time as I'd like to devote to hobby time, but typically this time of year, that's kind of on par for my life. So, uh, we're going to look at Project St. Luke, and uh, what kind of progress I've made on that. We're also going to take a look at uh, more stuff from Tom Arilli and Tommy out there, tomarillion.de. We're looking at crates and barrels today, two different sets, but I threw them all in one plastic bag because I can do that. And then, uh, the Arbiter of Fates. We're going to take a look at another Dark Age um, model today. This guy is amazing. I love this figure. Um, and one of you guys is going to get... That's right. Today's random giveaway, the Arbiter of Fate. One of you guys is going to get this guy. He's huge. He's going to cost me like 80 bucks to ship. Um... And then to wrap it up, I'm going to keep it short today because I've been going long. So to wrap it up, we are going to look at another model uh, or a couple of models from the Nemesis line. 
These are the uh, the Mantis. I love these figures out of the Orphans line from Xena Miniatures. We're going to take a look at those. So, that's what we've got covered. All right. Again, keep an eye out for Andy Lyon stuff. Throw a link up. We'll make sure you guys have that information. Um, we've got a few things to cover, so let's get to it. Progress update. Da, 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 afro, da, 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 circus, afro, circus, afro, circus. <sighs> For those of you who haven't seen Madagascar 3 yet, I highly recommend it. It's good times. What does that have to do with this project update? <clears throat> Nothing. Uh, anyways, so, yeah. Sidetracked. Woo! What do we have here? We need a unit of uh, strikes. Actually, a couple units of strikes. And a strike leader. Uh, technically, you can have three in a unit or six in a unit. Um, but, you know, that's, that's game action. We'll talk about that later on down the line. This is a project update. What are we looking at? Well, these four guys are a little more finished than these three guys because these four guys have had extra highlights and uh, an extra wash. I'm trying a couple of new things. I'm actually going really, uh, really deep and dark on my washes here. So we'll take, um, we'll take a, a mega zoom, the monster zoom. We'll get in here and take a look at him. As you can see, what I really want to do with these guys is I really want uh, to show that they're in a, a volcanic ash waste. So my highlights, they're going to be broad um, and across the model. As you can see, they're lengthy instead of just uh, peaked out. And then also really deep, dark colors on the washes. I'm actually mixing a lot of browns um, on the washes. You can see... Uh, just how dark these guys really are. I mean, obviously, I'll pick out the metallics and their masks and their swords, uh, as well as their knee pads and their boots. And then the uh, gauntlets. These guys have, like, big gauntlets. You can see them right there. Actually, pretty cool gauntlets. Um, I'd hate to get hit in the face with them. They remind me of the gauntlets from Conan the Barbarian, kind of, sort of. Um, but anyways, yeah, as you can see, going really deep and dark with the leather uh, on these guys, is I really want them to be... Um, pretty much just covered like in an ash type substance, right? They're they're up in the volcanic ash wastelands, chasing around the uh, Dragiri Fire Clan. So as you can see, this one's a little lighter than that last one. Um, we'll put down the uh, remote. We'll do a side by side comparison so you guys can actually see um, where I've gone with regards to the uh, shading. Now I will bring the highlighting up, I will peak highlight on those, bring the shading up, let you guys look at my cutting mat because it's awesome like that. Uh, but yeah, bring the or bring the, uh, the highlighting up on these guys. They won't be nearly as dark, but that is kind of the feel that I want to go with them, right? Because I really want them to match up and kind of offset the metal armor of Luke, right? So I want them to be a nice contrasty color to uh, what he's got going on. Again, the basing obviously is going to be the same since they're on the same bases, but uh, they're leather uh, leather clad with some armor, and then, you know, Luke obviously all uh, clad in giant pimp armor. But yeah, so we will uh, highlight these guys uh, probably another two, maybe three times, uh, give them a quick glaze to tie all that highlighting together, and, uh, and that'll be that. Uh, another couple of hours work on these guys at the most. Then uh, I'll probably move into finishing the bases up, get the bases done, and uh, move on to probably uh, firestorms, maybe the arsenals. So that's the uh, project update for Project St. Luke. All right, well, aside from Crate and Barrel being an overly expensive retail store here in the old US of A, we've got uh, Crate and Barrel sets from uh, Tom Aurelian. Looking at uh, more of his product again this week. All right, now these are two separate sets. The crates, the crates are one set, and the barrels, the barrels are another. But uh, as you can see, you get a good amount of variety, right? I've got, I think maybe two crates that match. Nope, they're even different. They look the same, but they're different. And I'll show you how they're different. They're different actually by the uh, detail on the top. So as you can see, those two might be the same. I might have a match. No, I don't. These are as close to matching as you're going to get. 
and again they're a little different just by their crossbars uh, this one's completely different than those two so he's not even close so that means uh, two four six seven eight completely different crates in this set again this is white resin I was gonna wash but again like I said earlier my my week has been an absolute nightmare so I haven't had uh, time to lace a little paint and do a little washing but again these are uh, these are good quality pieces of cast resin get that out of the way so we can kind of focus in on that and take a look a little rotation action going on there so you know obviously nothing on the bottom that's where we glue them to our bases or to our terrain pieces again you uh... you can use these pretty much either or right you can take and throw them on a forty millimeter base Woo, forty millimeter base uh, round square it doesn't matter you can throw them on a 50 millimeter base, you can throw them on any bit of terrain that you may have. I mean this is a this is a case that's got rope handle. Uh, you should be able to see that rope handle right there. We'll zoom in a little bit on that. Let me get it in place. And we'll do that zoom. The big zoom. Here comes the zoom. Here comes the blur. Yes, blur. Blur out of focus, not blur the awesome CG company that makes really amazing videos uh, change the light on that a little bit maybe that'll help okay there we go a little better a little better let's bring that out there we go gives us obviously a nice deep drop shadow but as you can see from my fingers just too big to uh, to show this thing from there you can see that this box has got rope carrying handles on the side the uh, metal lacing plates on the top this one here this is the biggest of the bunch and it has basically a padlock on the front of it see there the padlock cross beam on the side it's nice, nice wooden texture so yeah they're crates dude and dudettes and peoples crates not so crates just crates and then the barrels. Take a quick look at the barrels. We'll slide the crates out the way. So, since I played Dark Age and Wrath of Kings, and they're semi industrial, semi uh, technological, slash post apocalyptic, as you can see, we have a set of four barrels, are your standard industrial 50 gallon drum type. As you can see, we've got nice detail. There's no mold lines on these things at all. I mean, they're obviously one one piece castings, but no mold lines. Um, I don't even see mold lines on the bottom. So excellent work by Tommy. There, Tom Rillian. Looking over him again. You know, I mean, obviously we'll hit the bottom there to flatten it out, uh, as you always have like where that random flat spot is. There's always like an air bubble esque type thing there. But yeah, looking at every single one of these up close there is zero in the way of mold lines so yeah excellent job crane barrels tomarillion.de go check it out buy some stuff because he's a cool guy and uh, he makes cool stuff alright we are stepping in or I should say back to the dark age back to the future back to the dark age into the dark age nah who knows alright so we're rolling up into the dark age Hey, there's a little sun coming through the window there. You can see it. Woo, sunshine through the window. So awesome. I love sunshine. It is June, and we have not had enough of it here in the Pacific Northwest. All right, back to the matter at hand. Dark Age. Ice casts. Arbiter of Fates. This guy's like, you know, super captain of the Dragiri. He is uh, super huge and, like, you know, super Billy Badass. He also has a name that if you're a native English speaker like me, you can't say. You just can't. It's like Ricky Ticky Tavi. Uh, on steroids, but uh, yeah, so as you can see, uh, art card always comes with the Dark Age stuff in the starter box. You get his uh, his card, which uh, gives you obviously his stats. And uh, if you want to know a little bit more about that, I believe it was episode number five uh, 50 millimeter base, those are always cool. He is, as you can see, a five part model arms, his axe. I mean, look at that. That okay. Just to give you guys an idea of how big this guy is, this is his axe. This is a Great Knight Terminator. 
right? So I've got an axe, literally, that's the bottom of the base, the, the bottom of the axe head comes to the top of the head of the Grey Knight Terminator. For those of you who don't play 40k, let's take a look at the axe next to the Legion Beast. That's right. This one's actually mine. I painted this one so you all can crack on my paint jobs because I painted them. But literally, um, Nephilim Soldier, the uh, top of the axe is actually taller than the top of the wings on that Nef Soldier. That's just his axe. That's ridiculous. That makes him an absolute, just a monster. And, you know, okay, so his, uh, his body in and of itself, obviously same size as that. Again, five-part model. He goes together really well. I know this because I've dry fit him a few times. So I was going to, uh, you know, play Dragiri, but I saw St. Johan and got all geeky and went like ape nuts over it. But yeah, so the model actually, I've dry fit this model a few times. It goes together really, really well. Even with a hugely separated head, the uh, the model goes, I mean, look at that. It just locks into place, right? I'm uh, rotating. It's not going anywhere. So uh, they engineered this model really well. Head locks into place. As you can see, I've got flash to clean off. Uh, well, I don't. One of you guys is going to have to clean off flash. Because I'm sending this model out to one of you guys. Um, I love this model, but quite honestly, I won't get to a Dragiri Warband for quite some time. So, why not give it away, right? I can do that, because it's my show and it's my model. So, the detail on this thing is insane. I mean, we're talking just absolutely insane. Let's take a, uh, take a zoom in and, and really kind of go over it in detail. Again, like I said... Typically when I look at a model, I look for mold lines, right? That's what I want to see. I want to see how much extra work I have to do. What do I got to do to clean it up? Flash, flash doesn't really bother me, right? Because most of the time, flash, I can just literally twist off or wiggle back and forth, right? So uh, it's the mold lines that drive me nuts because I have to get out a file and actually chip away at detail. And I don't like to do that. So always looking for mold lines, right? Do I see any? I mean, I would expect to see some somewhere in that leg pad. And I'm going to readjust my light so I can see a little better. It might wash it out for you guys. If it does, I'm sorry. But again, I'm looking for mold lines, and I will point them out to you when I see them. I'm expecting to see some in here, and I don't, which is a surprise to me. But again, I've dry fit this model a few times, so I've gone over it pretty good. Okay, so there's a mold line right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me back it out a little bit. It's a little tiny mold line that comes down the center of the pad, right? And that's the type of stuff that, that I look for when I look at a model and the quality of a model. But again, I would expect that mold line to run the gambit all the way down the leg. So if it's only here, that means that pressurization probably didn't lock it into place. Uh, you know, Typically when you have a mold line that goes all the way down, it means that the mold is wearing out and getting old. I don't see that here, right? Because I don't see that on the top. I don't see, I see a little bit. There you go. You guys can see a little bit of a mold line through there. And that obviously carries down. But it doesn't carry across, it doesn't carry across the chest. I would expect, let me hit my tripod there. I would expect to see that mold line carry down through here and match up there. But I, I just am not seeing that. So to me, that says that the uh, vulcanizer or not the vulcanizer, but the uh, the spin caster did not actually um, lock that mold into place. And that's not the guy who's casting the mold, that's the machine. The machine itself uh, basically lost suction somewhere and didn't kick that mold into place 100%. Happens every now and again. So yeah, a little extra work that you have to do there and up top for whoever is going to get this model. All right, we'll take a look at the arm. Again, looking for mold lines, looking for mold lines. I don't see any, but man, look at the big ass spikes on this guy's, I mean, his shoulder, not only his shoulder guard, but on his forearms. He's got this big old monkey ball of a fist. I mean, how'd you like to get hit with that thing? That would totally suck. I mean, that would make my day not fresh at all. 100% not okay with getting slapped with that. All right, so we'll move the, the, the big guy and his arm out of the way. We'll take a look at the other arm to see if we can find any mold lineage. It's 
you know, again we got a little bit of cleanup we'll have to do here a little bit here so again flash flash and venting it doesn't bother me it's the mold lines that drive me crazy and we'll flip it over for good measure you guys see any anybody point one out to me take the light back a little bit yeah I don't see any on that arm either so both arms are solid right so now we take a look at the axe now typically here I would expect to see a mold line either down the arm or, or excuse me down the hand that attaches to or the haft of the axe right because typically they will take and lay this weapon flat on the mold like this and then the the top of the mold goes over the top of it and then you would expect I would expect to see a mold line run down here because it should follow the uh, the blade of the weapon itself and I don't see a mold line at all anywhere on this looking 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 I got nothing I got nothing I got nothing not even across the top so yeah excellent on the axe again that axe is just huge axe makes my head swim speaking of heads let's take a look at his move the axe he's ugly trust me Pagiri are ugly things alright again looking for mold lines I would expect to see him running basically down the top of the head sorry out of frame you know because the uh, basically the axe head of his crest would be center of the mold then I'd expect to see a mold line run down the middle and expect to have a mold line in the center of the cavity and I don't see one anywhere so uh, again I'm gonna stress how impressed I am with mold quality on the dark age line I mean, they really do pay attention to um, what they're doing when they cast their figures so to me that's a huge thing again uh, I'll go ahead and throw I'll throw side by side so you guys can see just how large this model is again that's with the uh, Grey Knight next to an F1 soldier as you can see he just dwarfs both of them I mean he just makes them just look small um, I don't have a heavy war jack handy let me see if I got any heavy war beasts uh, no no heavy war beast so I don't have any sitting handy sorry about that but anyways love this model and eventually I will get around to painting one but not anytime soon so this one is going to go to one of you guys I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys uh, whoever picks this model up I hope you play Dark Age if not this is a good place to start because uh, he is a great model to, uh, to build around there he is, the Arbiter of Fate, the Ice Cast from Dark Age. All right, last but certainly not least, we have the Mantis. This is a troop figure from the game Nemesis by uh, Zenit Miniatures out of Spain. They make some cool stuff. So this is your card with the painted figure on it. Stats on the back. So stat card basically, a couple 30 millimeter bases, and then uh, obviously two part resin models one of the things I do enjoy about resin models is they are easy to clean easy to work with and the uh, the simple fact of the matter is they're easy to put together All right so let's take a look at the uh, the sculpting work on these things and see if it is up to snuff do we see any mold lines that's what again what I look for I look for mold lines mainly because the, uh, the venting, like I said earlier, the venting and the flash don't really bother me all that much. There's some mold lines that drive me crazy. And as you can see, really, really clean across this model. You know, great little detail. Got cool little helmets to style the design. Um, I really like the guy that sculpts the, or the orphan line. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know who it is and I haven't done the research. But I really dig these models. Really enjoy these figures. They have... Um, a really good cartoony flavor and I think that that is uh, a big draw for me in in these
figures in this line. Um, not only are they uh, cartoony, but they're unique in concept, right? They're a bunch of kids that basically dress up as insects and uh, run around and fight adults. So Lord of the Flies type uh, type thing with uh, regards to their concept and what they do, but a little more. Give me some. There we go. Focus. Give me some focus. Again, a little more cartoony than what uh, what most people are expecting to see out of a miniatures line. But again, I think to me that's what makes them unique, right? The fact that they're a little cartoony, um, the fact that their their details uh, are a little more rounded instead of uh, you know angular and crisp, gives them a flavor that I feel is completely and wholly unique. So I love this line. Still have a few more models in it to uh, to collect. Um, if you guys have played the game, I'd love to hear about it. I've read the rules, um, well, the previous rules. I need to pick up the Arbantes Menace box set. Anybody out there got one they want to trade for something? Uh, Wrath of Kings models, maybe? Who knows? Anyways, yeah. We've got uh, the Mantis. Again, like I said, these guys are two-part models. Because they have separate hands. And there's, there's the hand sprue for uh, their left and right hands. Actually, both of them are left hands. So, it should be interchangeable. If I can get this thing to zoom, there we go. Excuse me, focus. But again, looking for mold lines. Little bit of one right there. Gonna have to do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleanup. But again, I, you know, on the, on the resin stuff, I really don't mind it all that much because it takes literally like a quarter of the time to clean up the resin stuff. It's really a soft material. That was my dog. She's telling me somebody somewhere they shouldn't be, uh, which should probably be a neighbor's dog. So we're going to pause. All right, dog taken care of. She should be back in the house now. Okay, so there it is, the, uh, the mantis. We'll do a super zoom really quick so you guys can get a good scope of the details on this one. We'll move those out of the way there. There we go. Good scope of the details on this on this one here. And we'll turn them over for you so you can see the back side as well. It's not like flipping a steak. Alright. So there you have it. Again, I think these guys are awesomely full of character. Like that pause there was good pause. Awesomely full of character. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Yeah, so good character on these models. Again, um, really uh, solid in regards to execution on the uh, the resin. Uh, we've looked at the uh, the giant for these guys in in the past in a previous episode. Probably look at the scarabs next. Uh, maybe the grasshoppers. But again, I I just love this line. These guys are so full of character and they're so. Uh, full of just to me they've got life right I mean they've got they've got a good amount of life to them because they've got great poses they're children again dressed as insects I can't say enough cool stuff about these guys so uh, if you guys have played the game Nemesis let me know I'd like to hear about it um, and there you have it the Mantis from uh, Xena Miniatures